time to enter. There will she hide her to listen to our propose. This is my office. Fare thee well in it and leave us alone. I'll make her come, I warrant, presently. Now, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, as we do trace this alley up and down, our talk must only be of Benedict. When I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him more than ever thy did merit. <laughs> my talk to thee must be how Benedict is sick and wrong with Beatrice. Of this matter, his little Cupid's crafty arrow day, but only wounds I hear say. Now begin, we cannot slept, we cannot quite fear, just like a lapwing runs close by the ground to hear our conference. The pleasant standing is to see the fish touch with her golden oars, the silver stream, and greedily devour the treacherous bait. So angry is the Beatrice, who even now is couched in the woodbine covered Fear you not, my comfortable Then go we near her, let her ear lose nothing of the false sweet bait that we lay. <laughs> No, truly, Ursula, <laughs> she is too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy and as wild as the haggards of the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince and my new chosen lord. And did they bid you tell her of it, madam? They did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them, if they loved Benedict, to wish him wrestle with affection, and never to let Beatrice know of it. Why did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve as full as fortunate a bed as ever Beatrice shall pounce upon? Oh, God of love, I know he doth deserve as much as may be yielded to a man. But nature never framed a woman's heart in prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Yeah. Disdain and scorn ride sparkling in her eyes, misprising what they look on. And her wit values itself so highly that to her all matter else seems weak. She cannot love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nor take no shape nor project of affection. She is so self endeared Sure, I think so. And therefore, certainly, it were not good she knew his love, lest she'll make sport at it. Oh, why, you speak truth. I never yet saw man. How wise, how noble, young, how rarely featured, but she would spell him backward. So turned she every man, the wrong side out, and never gives to truth and virtue that which simpleness and merit purposes. Sure, sure, such carping is not commendable. No, not to be so odd and so old fashioned as Beatrice is. How to be commendable? But who would dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would mock me into air. Oh, she would laugh me out of myself, press me to death with wit. Therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in size, waste inwardly. To a better death than die with mocks, which is as bad as die with tickling. <laughs> Yet tell her of it, hear what she will say. No, rather I will go with Benedict and wish him wrestle against his affection. <laughs> and truly, I'll devise some honest slanders to stay <laughs> <laughs> One does not know how much an ill word may have poisoned life in. <laughs> oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. <laughs> She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have, as to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. Oh, he is the only man of Italy, always excepting my dear Claudio. I pray you be not angry with me, speaking my fancy. Signor Benedict, for shape, for bearing, Argument, and <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, he has an excellent good name. His excellence to dine at end, had it. <laughs> <laughs> when are you married, madam? Why, every day. Tomorrow. Come, go in. I'll show you some attires and have thy counsel which is best to furnish me tomorrow. She's lying. 
mind, I warrant you. We've caught her, madam. If it should prove so, that loving goes by hats. Some Cupid kills with arrows, some with traps. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 